Isting says he's stepping down as the company's CEO after leading it for two decades. Netflix has been under pressure over the last year, losing subscribers for the first time in history and suffering a steep fall in the share price. But the latest figures show a return to growth and hit shows including Harry and Meghan attracted more viewers. Samir Hussain has more. It's been quite the year for Netflix. It surprised investors when it reported not one but two quarters where the service lost customers. But it ended up ending the year adding significantly more subscribers than it initially anticipated. Now, Netflix has been cracking down on account sharing, and in November, it launched its ad-supported version of the service that now Netflix is saying is starting to gain traction. But overshadowing the earnings report was news that its founder, the person who moved Netflix from a DVD mail delivery service to a pioneering streaming service that fundamentally changed the way people watch shows and movies, was leaving his post as CEO. Reed Hastings said the move was planned, part of a succession plan that has been years in the making. Under his leadership, Netflix grew into an industry giant that basically forced other media companies to build their own streaming offerings. After 25 years, Reed Hastings now wants to move his efforts towards philanthropy and being a bridge between the company and the board of directors. Well, we spoke to Guy Bisson from Ampair Analysis in Los Angeles, and I asked him about the legacy Reed Hastings leaves behind for the new bosses. Well, I think both the co-CEOs are already experienced executives in the company. Ted Sarandos, who is one of them, was already co-CEO with Hastings, and Greg Peters is stepping up from the chief operating officer role. So they're certainly capable of managing the company. But of course, when there's any regime change at a company like this, it's going to send some market jitters. Well, we didn't have those market jitters, did we? I mean, in fact, shares were up 6% on the news. I mean, is that more a reflection of what's been going on with the numbers and the subscriber base or the fact that we have finally got the succession plan in train? I think it's, um, as your reporter alluded to, it's the stellar growth that they saw this quarter, not previous quarters, of course. Um, they were close to double what they had forecast internally. Um, and they were also talking about the early success of the advertising tier. I think as analysts, we were disappointed by the lack of detail but on advertising. But to be fair to Netflix, they, they're only eight week, weeks into that strategy. Um, longer term, though, they're talking about later this year, that ad tier and also the paid sharing accounts, which allow you to share with another person for extra cost, will start to significantly increase revenue as we progress through this year. It's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, Ted Sarandos has got this sort of this background in original programming, and you're, you're seeing the likes of the Harry and Meghan documentary series bringing more people back to Netflix. But also, as you mentioned, Greg Peters, he's been instrumental in diversifying those revenue streams. Now, looking ahead to this, this ad tier launch, how successful do you think that's going to be? Well, one thing that surprised me, they actually talked about a target, a longer term target of about 10 percent of revenue. And I think that's much lower than perhaps some analysts had predicted. Um, that would account for about three, three and a half billion uh, annual revenues from advertising on the current total revenue number. So modest ambitions over the long term. They did ad admit to some early teething problems, particularly around targeting advertising to consumers. And they described how they've um, put in place a strategy that they're calling crawl, walk, run. And they're very much at the crawl stage at this moment. So very, very, very early days for that strategy.